Jamie Austin here. Welcome back to Real Estate of Mind podcast. And today we're going to have a mortgage moment. Oh my God, how to survive this crazy market. What are interest rates doing? How are we going just absolutely bonkers? And I have one of the most trusted lenders that I've ever worked with, Michael Abram here. So welcome, Michael. Thank you. Appreciate you having me today. <laughs> well, we had you on last, like almost a year and a half, two years oh, ago, yeah. two years Sounds ago. A long time. And my God, when we were talking about the market then, it's like night and day, right? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> you could say that just a little bit. In a nutshell, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what I feel like that I'm getting at least a lot of questions are, oh my God, what about the interest rates that are skyrocketing? What can we do? What is inflation? How does it affect your rates? So I wanted to bring somebody in here to sort of normalize the market for us so that you can understand, believe it or not, it's still a great time to get into real estate without a doubt. So yeah. please explain why the interest rates are skyrocketing, a little bit about inflation that kind of relates to more real estate right. and uh, let us know and yeah, we'll get so going. Basically, you got to start first with COVID, right? COVID yep. just threw a monkey wrench in everything in the market. We had a slowdown in being able to build things, get more inventory out there. People wanted space. We didn't know what this was all about, right? Right, right. So all of a sudden, you have a huge demand in inventory that's not there, and you have interest rates plummet to something we hadn't seen in a very, very long time at historic lows. So you had just a frenzy of people trying to get in. We had massive bidding wars, driving values up and up. It was not uncommon that everything was over ask, significantly higher. Yep. And you know, I know I was everything. one of those people that was writing <laughs> offers and accepting offers too. Right. And by the way, I wanna just make very clear, this was not, this dip, is not a recession caused by the real estate market, like the subprime lending market that happened in 2008. This is a completely different recession, a completely different market. And the interesting thing is because we've never really dealt with this kind of pandemic, right. it is, we're in uncharted territory, literally. Yeah, exactly right. So all of a sudden you have these homes that are now becoming too expensive yeah. right everything was ballooning out of control and then you start to hear the word inflation mm -hmm. and everyone goes well what's inflation from the housing market perspective well i mean the simple way to explain it is just it's an increase in goods uh, an increase in cost for goods or services right right so a house building materials building materials wood. right and you then cause a decrease in someone's purchasing power yep so simply put they're raising the interest rates to be able to slow the demand. The demand, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's kind of like a step-by-step -step process. You raise the rates with inflation. It creates less buyers in the market and makes it harder for them to qualify. If it's harder for them with less buyers, you have inventory sitting on the market a little bit longer in certain price points because people are nervous about paying significantly higher interest rates. If that happens, well, then it forces the real estate agent's hand and the seller's hand to make a market correction to right. where they think the value is on their home. And now all of a sudden it creates that stability that everybody wants to get back to and normalize home prices. But the weird thing is, at least, and correct me if I'm wrong, even what I'm seeing is we still are faced with a shortage of inventory. Yeah. So with the shortage of inventory, there are still people out there needing homes, right? Yeah. And so it's kind of a weird mix that even in my 20 year career, I've never seen this before. Like a, a healthy inventory, just, to, just so you know, a healthy inventory on the market is about six months of back inventory. That's what they consider a normal balance market. If there's less than six months, then it's a seller's market. And if there's more than six months, then it ends up being a buyer's market. But because of the supply chain issues, everything got all cattywonked and we're still yeah. five years behind catching up to the building supply is what I'm understanding and reading about. I mean, yeah. it's insane, five years out. So to normalize that, um, but it's still a good time to buy, even though the interest yeah. rates are high, they're the highest that they've been, but historically still low. I keep saying that, I, I sound like a parrot, right. historically low, historically low, <laughs> but explain that. So yeah, I mean, people have to get out of the mindset of what they saw happen to interest 
interest rates in COVID. That was an anomaly, something we never saw that we were predicting where interest rates were going to be heading into 2019, 2020 when yep. that happened. The interest rates where they are now is actually more in line with where we were expecting the market to go to. Right. It's just delayed a couple of years now in trying to correct itself to get there. Yeah. But, you know, like you just said, it's still a great time to buy. And it's simply because you got less buyers. That's right. right. So you actually have you flip the script a bit. Yeah. Right. If you can afford the payment on it, then you have less competition out there in some of these price points. And you're in the driver's seat a bit more. Something that we haven't seen for buyers oh, in a yeah. long time. And it's crazy because I work with equals sellers and buyers. So sellers are still trying to get a little real with the market changing, which means they might have to make price corrections, right? But buyers for the first time, I'm like, hey guys, I know, I, I get the interest rates are higher, but I was writing offers for clients where I, it, automatically there was 20 offers for every property. And some of them were coming in and sight like- Sight unseen, right? Sight unseen, yeah. like, like 200,000 over asking. I even had one personal example in South Pasadena. The agent called, we had written 200 over asking. The agent said, yes, yeah, somebody came in with $600,000 over asking. I yeah, was how like, can you compete? how can you compete with that? Absolutely, my guys you were can't. heartbroken. It was a happy ending in that we did find them something that was overpriced to begin with on the market and sat on the market just long enough for me to go back in and negotiate and get the price that was actually at market value, which ended up being the same price of what they offered on the other house. Right, right. Oh my gosh. But that demand, that clamor for something that wasn't there is what was driving the frenzy. Absolutely. Right? People were just trying to get out of smaller confined spaces and would do anything to get in that home. And they would go significantly higher. They would lift all their contingencies. They had to close fast. Yep. And this is what sellers expected and what listing agents were also expecting on every offer. That's exactly right. Just automatically over asking. And now what I, and you're so good about this, but when I normalize a market, like usually when, when I would speak to a seller, I would say we could use comparables or what they call comps about six months back. This market has shifted so mercurially yeah. that it then became three months, two months, one month. And now, literally, I, I had a listing with my partner, Jill, in the Valley, and we literally had an interest rate hike on one end, and then we had an open house, and then another interest rate hike on our second weekend of open houses. And I'm like, holy moly, like I've never had that happen before, like that much of a change so quickly. Yeah, it so was rapid. it was rapid. We were already priced aggressively, but in that particular instance, I had to tell my sellers 30 days ago, I could have gotten you over asking maybe by 2550, not crazy over asking, right. but we were lucky to get asking at that point. And that's yeah. that's how that's how quick the shift was. Exactly right. And that's the whole point of all this. As much as everyone doesn't want to admit that, that's what has to happen. It's a bell curve. What goes up Absol must come down. Absolutely. It's, it's always going to do that. And it does take time to normalize. And people just got used to being able oh, to absolutely. get whatever they wanted on a house. And that's not realistic. That's how you end up in a crash. Yeah. Because everything is so off course of where it should be. And statistically, you know, what's really interesting is just at least on the real estate agent perspective side, they realize that most agents in NAR and which is the National Association of Realtors, most realtors have only been in the business 10 years or less. And you know what that means? They've never seen the dip. They've they have never, seen, never seen a cycle. They've never weathered a cycle. You know, and as much as, uh, you know, I'm happy about having another birthday around the corner, it's also <laughs> I've weathered a few cycles and that becomes yeah. really huge because then people are looking for trusted advisors, not only for lenders, but they're looking for trusted advisors and real estate brokers like myself to help them normalize that. Because you're right. Most of them are like, oh, well, this is just how business is. And you're like, no, I've been saying for the last five years, it can't keep climbing at this pace. Yeah. This is not normal. People. Something's got to give. Yeah. You end up with everything falling apart and crashing. Exactly. So. Like if you're getting equity every year, six to 10 percent, that is in, that's incredibly that's healthy. A very good. Pace. Very good return. Mm -hmm. That's a very good return on your investment. And last year, people were seeing 18 percent, 20 percent. I mean, it was it was just yeah it was nuts unbelievable so how are you suggesting to buyers to approach the market in regards to interest rates so really 
whatever you're getting now on the interest rate, it's not your forever rate. It's really important to re remember that because we're in a, a state of heightened interest rates. Everything is due to inflation. So what goes up must come down. Absolutely. So if you can afford the payment, just know that once we actually hit a recession where the Fed acknowledges that we've had two consecutive periods of negative GDP growth, and they take their foot off the pedal and ease up on interest rates, you're going to refinance. That's you're right. going to lower your payments on that money that you borrowed, but you're not competing against everybody else trying to get back into the market at the same time. You're Absolutely. just lowering your cost on that money. Absolutely. And what I also tell clients is please understand maybe your first your first property, even though I don't take anybody lightly spending that much, it's usually the biggest purchase you will ever make your entire life. But Absolutely. what I want to normalize for you is that maybe that first property is not your be all end all property. But what it is, is you want to use it's like a stepping stone. You want to just get into the market any way you can. And then you, then we stair step it. And then, then you build equity, and then you can leverage that to the next place. And, uh, and the same with exactly like your right. interest rate. Get in any way you can and just understand you're really not going to be married to that rate for the next 30 years. And that's, that's, what everybody, that's exactly what you're saying. Right. right. And then, you know, there are tricks that we're doing right now to help people and different programs to kind of manipulate what we're seeing in the market to help people understand, hey, it's still a good time to buy. Here's why. But let's also talk about how we're going to keep your payments lower. That's right? exactly right. And what I've seen something that I haven't seen in so long, the arm. The arm is coming back <laughs> Adjustable strong. rate yeah. mortgage. Oh my goodness. So yes. tell me tell me about that. So explain to people because for, for so long, it would spend like you could get a 30 year fix, no problem. But now right. there's a teaser arm rate that will help them get in at a lower rate for a few years, but explain. So what, what are some products that you're seeing? And I know your company is amazing because they, right. they his company, which Countrywide Mortgage, they think outside cross country mortgage, they think outside the box. And this is becoming so crucial crucial. It's one thing you could go to an institutional lender like Wells Fargo or Chase or whatever. But for cross country mortgage, what I what I like about sitting down with Michael is he can take stated non stated income. And he thinks outside the box. He has relationships with his company with other banks that are going, we get this is weird. We get this is unconventional. We don't want to lose the market and scare off first time buyers or even buyers that are refinancing. We just need to work together to get creative. So, right. and those what creative products? financing programs, they're not like what people think of when you think of subprime, when you think of the market. Exactly. Collapse. Thank you, know, you for clarifying people, that. You know, yeah. when you say creative, like that's probably the first thing people think of. And they say to me, is like, well, these probably are unsafe. No, they're not. They're actually a lot harder for me to qualify somebody right. to than you think. I may like simplify the explanation, but there is a lot of due diligence done on the back end of these loans to make sure that we don't have something. Thing like that. That's right. It's, it's something called the ability to repay. And they look very closely at this. It's not the same as the programs that existed when that collapsed. That's in every you could get a loan for breathing last yeah. time. And this time it's not. Which again is why I say that this is not the same real estate dip. It's because the buyers out there, they have the money. They've been saving. They've been maybe outbid five to 10 times and they're exhausted, but they've been building their savings at the same time. So yeah, yeah it's, exactly it's so right. those creative programs, you still have to have a good FICO score, right. still have to have good credit, still have to have job history and still have to be willing to qualify. Yeah, and you talked about the ARM. That's a huge one right now because the ARM is actually always pricing better than a 30 year because it's a short term fixed period on that adjustable mortgage makes it more attractive. Mm -hmm. And in a market where we know interest rates are so much higher, and we know that there's going to be a recession at some point where rates dip, that actually makes a lot of sense to pitch to people. Absolutely. Right? We want to yeah. keep the rates lower because we know that's not going to be your forever 30 year fix. Or we're doing interest only, which is just paying the interest. We're not paying principal as well, okay. but on an interest only loan, if you're at a $1.5 million loan and a 30 year fix is 8% or 7%, that's a very high payment. But right. if you take an interest only arm and it's, you know, 5875, it could be thousands of dollars difference in your payment for something that gets you in, you qualify. And think of it like a Band-Aid, right? You're just yeah. going to rip the Band-Aid when the rates drop, and then you're going to refinance into that 30-year fix that makes you feel more comfortable. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Or we're doing buy-downs. 
buy downs have come back and yeah. probably something we haven't really talked about in about seven to ten years. That's exactly really right. Haven't talked about it. Yeah. And they've come back. Buy downs strong. and bridge loans. Yes. Yeah, the, the need was not there during the market the last two years for buy downs and bridge loans. You couldn't do a bridge loan because people didn't want to take those offers. There were That's 900 right. offers waiting that didn't require a <laughs> that bridge were all loan. cash or were ready to go in 30 days. No exactly. problem. Didn't have to worry about a property. So just to uh, let you know, a bridge loan was basically something that you would use where you have equity in your house. You needed to sell your house, right? And you were purchasing another house and you needed the funds from the sale of that house to purchase the new place so you would get a bridge loan which would let you move forward on the house you haven't owned yet but with the bridge loan at a slightly elevated interest rate but would get you and it's a short loan like 45 days or 60 right. days or whatever just so that if on this end and boy you better make sure your real estate agent has priced the property right on this end because exactly. that was predicating everything on the so believe me yeah. you had to work in tandem on both ends to make sure that you were priced right you were on the market you were aggressively looking for buyers and that it was the right thing to do but i haven't seen that I did it for one of my clients just about 10 years ago. And yeah, that was about, exactly. that was the last time I did a bridge loan. Cause it's the only kind of loan out there where you may be able to do like a non-contingent with your house being exactly. sold. Yeah. Because everything's funding concurrently. The bridge loan bank gives them the money right at the end of the loan of the purchase. They're sending, you're not getting the bridge loan and then falling out of escrow. And then you have this bridge loan to pay on your residence you know, on top of what you owe. They are very careful and methodical yeah. about this. It Absolutely. does not fund till you're going to close on that purchase. That's so right. So there is a little bit of comfort in that, but it did help a lot of people avoid going contingent upon sale. Yeah. The and explain the, explain the buy down rate for people who might not know what that is. Yeah. So this came back in a flurry and I've been talking to a lot of my real estate partners, CPAs, business partners about this. And so they come in two forms. It's called a two, one buy down or a three, two, one buy down. So what we're doing is qualifying the interest rate of whatever the rates are today. Let's mm -hmm. just say 7%, just okay. to call it even. And someone wants to do a 3 2 one buy down. Well, we qualified them for their loan at today's rate of 7%, but right? their first year interest rate on their 30-year fix is 4%. Wow. And then their second year goes to 5% because it's only a 2% lower. The third year is now 1% lower at 6%. Wow. Then the fourth year, it would go back to the original 7%, assuming they were still in that. And that's so important right now because as the average 30-year fix right now is above 7%, right? if you can do a buy-down and make that work, you're making someone's payment more reasonable and making it attractive by to the thousands. buyers. By thousands. Yeah, by thousands. Yeah. You know, over the course of a couple of years, whether they do a 3-2-1 or a 2-1, you're making a sizable difference. And if yeah. you can bridge the gap somewhere for a buyer to feel more comfortable in a higher interest rate environment and get creative with something like that, mm -hmm you're going to be able to get property sold. You're still having buyers out there, but what you're doing is getting creative with what's out there and using your tools yeah. to get those buyers in the contract. And they're going to refinance too. They're, because I, they're going to. Absolutely. And that's what I'm telling buyers across the board. Like, just hang tight. Understand this is not your be all end all, but don't don't fret. They'll work it out for you. And this is where I'm just, it's such an interesting thing because most people still, because the market, it, there's a lag time, right? People right. people are like, oh no, I just, I, I can't buy anything because I need 20% down and that's it. And I don't have it and I might as well, it's, I gotta go back to having this, that, and the other. And it's like, no, not necessarily. You could not get something with 10% down, 5% down. Yeah. It just depends on arm. You can make the combo. I mean, you still have to, you know, you still have to be breathing. You still have to have a job. You still have to have good credit. So all of those, exactly. but if all of those things are in place, you can work with a, somebody like yourself right. to really kind of strategize because a lot of people who are, haven't really probably purchased something before, I find that they're really price conscious, like mortgage price conscious. They're, they don't really understand the rates or how that could affect purchasing power. Mm -hmm. They're just like, I need my monthly net to equal this. Right. So how do we bridge the gap, right? How do we meet the buyer with what they're asking for and hoping for? And that's what those buy down programs are doing. They're phenomenal. I mean, you just have to be keeping an open mind and, you know, there's always a catch to everything, right? Absolutely. So the only people that really can credit for this are a builder in new construction mm -hmm. and a seller. 
can't come from your credit, can't be an agent saying, I'm going to offset commission by X amount or whatever. Right. There are specific rules. It's got to be the seller or it's got to be the builder. Okay. You know, so if the seller's not willing to come to the table, well, then we can't do that, especially if it's not a new construction. But for somebody where someone's going to make an offer, say 15000 lower, and the seller's willing to take that, why not just give the credit to the, the buyer for 15000 instead? Yeah. Because it's not going to make that much of a difference to their tax rate anyways. But that 15000 could be a sizable difference to their payments for two Absolutely. years. Absolutely. And now you've created a more amicable scenario for the buyer to want to proceed with your home. Absolutely. You, it's like removing the fear from the market. Goodness yeah. knows we have a lot of fear mongers out there anyway. And it's like, I hear henny penny, the sky is falling, but I'm also like the one in the corner going, the cheerleader, wait, it's still good. It's still good. It's okay. It's all right. You it's going to level know what's out. out there. You just got to know what's out there. You know, you got to expand your horizon and Absolutely. think outside the box of just a cookie cutter bank because they're not going to have 90% of this stuff that's out there when we talk about creativity because they don't need to. It's not their bread and butter. They stick to one thing and that's okay because that works for them. They're backed a different way. But as a direct lender and broker, we're trying to capture everything all different angles of buyers and that's where you know it helps to have someone that's creative and by the way it doesn't hurt that today's sponsor of the show and will be for several shows to come is cross-country mortgage and with michael being the senior loan officer and advisor i i, I even hate to say just loan officer because you're really an advisor and at a and, a and at your level of proficiency and experience you know it's really nice to like i feel like when i when i have referred people to you i just know that they're going to be well taken care of they're gonna and i said even if you're a new a new buyer he explains things in a way and then you get that buyer which i've had oh well i can get rocket dog mortgage <laughs> and you know mortgage you know one two three go and you know and i said well did you talk to somebody is it the same person are you getting the same person on the phone chances are not and then then they give you a teaser rate. Let's say it's six percent now. They give you a teaser rate, and then they get in there and they're like, "Oh yeah, we need. Th oh yeah, we need this and this and this and this." And they, it's just like it's like the rabbit hole. You go into the yeah, rabbit hole. You keep peeling the onion on it and go where. How much worse is this going to be? And than it's what bad. You did? It's, a bait, it's almost like a bait <laughs> and switch. They said it what is they a bait and switch. They wanted to get their foot in the door. Absolutely. And now they've trapped you because you're too far down the rabbit hole to make a change. You're just going to have to finish it out, and. It's not the way we do business. We it's did not this. The way I do business. No, we did this. I had my clients uh, pre approved with Michael, and then they went to, and this is no fault of theirs because they went to a new construction build mm -hmm. where they have most new constructions build, they have an in house lender. But the in house lender said, oh, I can beat that rate. No questions, ifs, ands, or buts. So fill out our application, which they did. They're mm -hmm. like, it doesn't ever hurt to double app and see what the best interest rate is going to be. But long story short, they guaranteed them that they could do the loan guaranteed most lenders will not guarantee anything until they really run your credit check your tax history all that good stuff but they guaranteed that he could do it what happened 18 days into the process 18 that's longer than inspections longer than yeah. you know it, the timeline and then they basically said yeah we can't do the loan and i'm like <laughs> like it's then i have to pick the buyers up off the floor yeah. And like say, and I'm so feeling. sorry. Yeah. And I'm, I can't force them to use anybody or anything, but this is why when we say like our best advice is to really use a trusted advisor, there's a reason why that, especially in a volatile market like this, right. a, you want somebody with the experience that can, that knows products that are creative, mm -hmm. that can really work with, work with your budget, work with where you're at. But knowing the ins and outs and knowing I like if Michael says that they're qualified and they can close, then I know I can lead with that. Most of the other ones I couldn't. And I just told him, I said, Michael's very thorough with his pre-approval process. I would be very surprised if this doesn't come back around and they tell you that they yeah. can't do it. I'm, I don't want to be like, you know, the, the bearer of bad news, but I'm very curious as to how after that much due diligence that you did that they that somebody else was just going to guarantee them that they'd get it yeah exactly i mean and i know the scenario you're talking about mm -hmm. and i do remember the client saying you know they never asked me the level of detailed of questions that you were asking Bingo. and i said well 
you know, being a first time buyer, that's okay. Nobody's going to fault you on that. You don't know any different. That's right. But having now had that happen to you, you are now going to see a difference of how you approach things, whether it's with me again down the line or another lender or three other lenders, you're going to just look at how they're questioning the, the methodical aspect of the qualification, the level of communication, and they're going to be better prepared. And sometimes you have to have a hard case like that to understand it. But you don't always have to. You can listen to your real estate agent and right. trust them who have been in this business like Jamie <laughs> right? for a, Thank a long you. time. Yes. They know what they're doing. They know who they're referring. Trust the process. Yeah. And and I understand that sometimes it's tough for people to let go of control and it's it's really tough. And there is it's almost weird because there's a lot of information out there. Like most buyers start online looking for it and then that's just as easy to go down a rabbit hole about what I can afford, what the market looks like and what I should expect and all that stuff. But there's a reason why I still believe even with companies like Zillow who are we can do everything online you know they're trying to like say the real estate agent is becoming obsolete no i don't think in this business we will ever become obsolete now agents who aren't really good at their job or don't really know how to service their clients in in a really professional way and in a deep meaningful way might be obsolete but those of us who really understand the value of taking care of a client through the process from beginning to end and then beyond the end it doesn't just stop when we close escrow right. which is why you know 90 percent of my business has been referrals i'm with them for life and it just kind of feels like that and so if we're doing a good job and between the teams and everything then it's a good team that it's a should be a positive experience absolutely and not a crazy negative one yeah and the the level of knowledge is so important now more than ever whether it's on a real estate agent side a title side a lender absolutely. side you know from a lender perspective we all are trying to further diversify ourselves learn more keep learning there's a million products out there you know so this is a great time like with some of the stuff we're talking about interest only and buy downs you know take a, a, a second to study these learn them so that you can drive more business get more buyers and not lose business absolutely it's a great time to do that educate yourselves and just going further like down there so i know that probably some buyers would come to you and say well when do you foresee that interest rates are going to come down nobody has a crystal ball by the way I mean, right. there's probably people out there that have crystal balls, but not even that could really tell you something. So what, yeah. do, you, what do you tell the people? Right now, what them? we're really thinking is sometime in the second quarter between late April into early June. Of 2023? Kind of, of 2023 Got is it. what we're thinking as everything holds. Now, you know, no crystal ball, of course. You never know what can happen with everything abroad or things here with oil and all that other stuff that impacts things, right? Right, absolutely. Because there's so many different factors of what's driving the inflation and stuff. But if that were to hold, then that's really what we're thinking, which kind of aligns perfectly for the spring and early summer buying season, which we always- Which is historically our best season anyway. The best, right? Yeah. People are out of school. They're looking to relocate with their kids. They've yep. got more time to focus. It's summer, you know? So that's just kind of aligned perfectly if that were to be the case with interest rates dropping. Yeah, I love it. I do, and I think what's nice is it. it's it's like, if you go to people like us, we can be voices of hope and not yeah. doom and gloom, right? Yeah, I, mean, I don't you, present that at all. There's there's opportunities to be had. Always. You know, the glass is always half full, right? Absolutely. So you can sit there and dwell on this and go, oh my God, interest rates are so high and there's no inventory, or you can go, there's less buyers right now. Absolutely. I can afford this payment. I know it's gonna come down. I have a better shot now doing this rather than waiting till next year. Absolutely. So there is certainly some silver linings in all of this. So what would you say would be like the number one advice that you would want, like if somebody were coming into your office and besides all your knowledge with the new products, mm -hmm. somebody's coming in really green. They've heard a lot of bad news. They're nervous, but at the same time, they haven't quite met a Jamie Austin who's already told them how fabulous it is to buy and we will take care of you. But if they just come to you, what would you tell them? Would you say like, let me get you qualified, find a really good agent that knows what they're doing? What would you say to them? So I like to start first by asking, what are your goals and expectations to buy a home? I'm mm -hmm. asking what their desired payment range is, right? What are you hoping to pay? What are you paying rent right now? What are you, are you comfortable in that range? Are you 
comfortable hire. You know, so I kind of pinpoint what their goals are with everything. And then I go and tailor the qualification as closely as I can to what they're aiming for. Sometimes it's a perfect alignment and what they want matches exactly what they qualify for. Right. Sometimes they're underestimating their ability. They don't ah, know. Yeah. So I might show them, here's your comfort zone. If I've you told to. me you wanted to pay 3000 a month, here's everything that translates to 3000 a month. Price points, down payment requirements, everything, right? Mm -hmm. Broken down with explanations, sample payments you know, explaining the programs, right? And then I might say, you've got wiggle room. Here's another email, and this will talk about your ceiling. Yeah. This is not meant to say you need to ever go this high, but it is good to know that you have the ability to qualify 50,000 or 70,000 higher than that. So if you did find a home that you like, and you're comfortable on where this payment range is roughly, even on the ceiling side, you can get we aggressive. We can get you there. We yeah. can get you. It's not gonna stop at, you know, 500,000 price point you know that you can get to 550 or 575 and still be comfortable and it's not that far off from your range. So by giving the client that kind of information and breaking it down separately, it's making them more comfortable with understanding their ranges rather right. than their limitations. Do you have, and I'm just gonna throw it to you because you're the expert, but it's nice to be able to throw it in real numbers. So when you mm -hmm. say one interest point, how much money does that translate? to people's purchasing power? I would probably say an average of an interest rate, it's uh, it's affecting them by like thirty to $40,000 in terms of a price point. So that's you know? huge. Yeah, so especially valuable. when you're working with buyers there, you have to flip it in terms of like, not only can we get you the rate, buy down the rate and make it palatable, but like for sellers, for instance, like, that's what I had to explain to my seller when they called me in a panic, like, oh, we should have gotten, you know, over asking. And I'm like, yeah, but they just raised the interest rates another point. Mm -hmm. So what that did is that knocked out probably about 20 of the people that I spoke to the weekend before that were right. already at their max. Right. So you have to be able to put that in real world examples and talk about real purchasing power. Because one thing I love is that when I really get down to speaking with a client, and I tell them, what is your purchasing power? You may could afford a million dollars, like you said, but maybe you're really more comfortable at 750. And that's completely fine. But then I just want to make sure that I'm sending you properties and we're looking right. at properties that really honestly make sense for you. Exactly, because you don't want them to be overwhelmed and then just bow out of exactly. everything by feeling pressured into doing stuff that they're not comfortable with. So we try to ease them into it, right? Right. Make them feel comfortable looking at real numbers, showing them what a mortgage, taxes, and insurance break down to on a monthly basis, mm -hmm. and letting them see you know, that those are just the bare bone expenses. But if you're buying a house, keep in mind you'll have a gardener maybe or pool expenses air conditioning, heating. So you start to let them kind of play around with their budget and figure this stuff out. But the no pressure approach really helps keep them in the game right? and keep them as active buyers. Now, I have a question. We're going to, I want to see, we've got a little bit more time. I want to flip it. So if a seller is in a house, they've been in a house for quite some time, they've got mm -hmm. lots of equity and maybe they're downsizing, right? Which is a lot of, a lot of what I talk about too. Downsizing is very popular for people that are getting a of, and not, I don't even want to say retirement age because I, we have people out there that are retiring at 30. It really does depend on what your goals are, right? right? Exactly. So if they were downsizing a property and they had equity, what would you suggest? Because I hear a lot of people going, well, where am I going to go to? Like, I, mm -hmm. I can't afford to buy something else because by the time I get taxes and everything in that, I can't afford to move. So I'm kind of stuck here. What would you say to those people? So that's a great question. I think it just comes down to are they going to keep that property or not maybe rent it out with the downsizing, right? Because mm -hmm. if they are, then what we're doing is capitalizing on their equity. So right. we may be a stepping stone here and say, look, let's go get a fixed rate mortgage in the second position or a home equity line in the second position, whatever they're more comfortable with and makes sense financially, we're going to capitalize on their equity, right. get that money available so that they can downsize and buy that next place. Right. Yep. And that way they're prepared with the money needed for that downsize. 
And if there's something there where there's a debt to income issue or something else, we know all this ahead of time. We right. can play with this and you know come up with the different scenarios ahead of time of how this is all going to play out. And by the way, I have programs that deal with all of this. So you know when we're talking about creative financing, I'm already five steps ahead of you because I'm thinking of how. <laughs> Thank God. I know, right? <laughs> I got to figure God. out if we're doing this, how are we getting to this? Yeah, And if exactly. I do this, how did that impact this with all the payment breakdowns? So what am I showing you to qualify for that? And maybe something is uh, pulling money out now and you're going to sell this home six months or seven months from now, right? Right, we're absolutely. We're sit on this for a few months and play around with all the different guidelines. We can make this work. There are solutions out there. Yep. And one thing I love too, now this is just specific to the state of California. So wherever you live, you might want to check, but we have something called Prop 19. It used to be for just a few select counties. Now it's statewide, which is amazing. So if you're hearing this in the state of California and you were thinking about downsizing and you were 55 years of age or older, you can literally sell your house buy something else of you can even buy something of equal and even greater value but you'll pay the difference there but you can transfer your tax basis of whatever it is that's on huge. the older former property which is amazing that's huge especially with values below, yeah right? and it used to be you could only do that once but right. now they they will allow that three times i believe is what they will allow wow. which gives so much freedom for people so they're like i don't need a five bedroom house my husband and i we just need a two bedroom and we're happy Right. So then they could downsize, transfer their tax basis, and then they're not having to worry about where can I go to, that fear of that. So check even your local state to see what they have, if they have something close to the Prop 19. Because again, that's that's a source of freedom. That's a game changer right there game for a lot changer. of people. Because when you think about values ballooning, if somebody bought their home 20 years ago for oh my 300000 but it's Your taxes are 1500 a year right? as opposed to 20000 a year. Yeah. I mean, it's like, whoa, it yeah, is a game taxes changer. taxes could be more than what they've paid for their entire mortgage taxes Absol and insurance on their other home. Absolutely. And that's Absolutely. California for you, That right? is California, which is why there's <laughs> lots of people leaving, leaving but you know but there are more people actually just moving l like sideways they haven't left the state it hasn't been a mass exodus of leaving the state and w one thing I, I the reason why i know this is because we still are what they call in the mediterranean belt southern california still has great weather we don't have yeah. the swings of you know the harsh winters so there's a reason why people want to live on in this state for a reason so you can get to everything in a short period of time mountains, mountains sea beaches. beach desert yeah. i mean you, we've got it all we've got it all for sure so michael thank you so much you're always so informative and i love having you on the show tell us how people can get to you so you can always reach me on my cell phone at uh, area code 310 995 zero nine seven five um, or you can email me at michael dot abram at ccm dot com and i'll get back to you fairly quickly on both avenues and even if i'm in a meeting i'll text you back and let you know i i can acknowledge that and i'll get back to you as quickly as i can and you're very good at that that i know well he actually just read my sponsor form so you kind of took my job away from me but <laughs> thank you <laughs> And he will be sponsoring the next four shows as well. So he'll be, we'll have different guests, but just know that Cross Country Mortgage will be also putting that in the next four, three shows after this one, because this one will count as one, but we'll put it out there so you'll hear this information again. And if you're looking for moi, you can find me, uh, the Jamie Austin, the City of Angels Properties. Uh, and also we've expanded into Orange County, which is really exciting. So we're at ocandme.com. And we're on Instagram, uh, the City of Angels, is at mycityofangels.com on Instagram and OC and me on Instagram. So come find me, Jamie at the City of Angels Properties, or just Jamie at the City of Angels, actually, and you can look us up on the website. We've also expanded into LA, branched out, got a new team member that I want to give a shout out to, Miss Jill Levine. She rocks. Uh, we're here to service all your LA needs, and then we're just going to be there every step of the way with you. And this is Real Estate of Mind podcasts and we try to really bring you really pertinent information about what's going on in the market today and just thank you for spending time with us we love you guys thanks for having me jamie you bet thank mm -hmm. you